Do you like to binge watch TV? Did you know you could binge listen to podcasts? Head over to electronicmediacollective.com where they have podcasts for days. Do you like podcasts about wrestling? They have that. Do you like podcasts about TV and film? They have that. Do you like podcasts about horror? EMC has that too. Do you like comedy? Do you like books? Guess what? They've got you covered. Head over to electronicmediacollective.com Pick your favorite podcast today. Hi, this is Kevin Mangold from Red Clover, and you're listening to Moose's Monster Mash. You're listening to Moose's Monster Mash. Welcome, Horror Hounds, to the lost episode of Moose's Monster Mash. I am your host, Moose, and if you are listening last month, you know who's joining me this month, but in case you weren't, joining me this month is Billy Zombilly Peck. Hello. And, Top of the morning to you. And there it is. Call it the lost episode, because we did this last year, but due to some nefarious magic or something, all the audio disappeared. Heard. It's March. It's time for Leprechaun. Maybe this time it'll actually stick. <laughs> Let's hope. So if not, we're just, you know, doomed to, I mean, we're, we're just bound and determined not to have this episode. Yeah, we'll just, we're just two friends that get together and talk about the Leprechaun series once a year, just, just for fun. And no one gets to hear what we thought, hear our thoughts. Yeah. But yeah, Leprechaun, 30, it, 30 years ago this year, this movie came out. Well, this this franchise started, rather. Mm-hmm. And it, it it really is just this comedic franchise. And it, it gets goofier as we go along. But the, the first one in particular is a really solid outing. You know, it, mm-hmm. it's it, it's got solid horror. It's got... Great kills, great comedic timing. I mean, it, it 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 hits all the marks for what horror should be, and yet it's also very '90s. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, I mean, just re- rewatching it, it's like, oh yeah, this is definitely a '90s movie. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's funny. Everyone always talks about you know Jennifer Aniston's like breakout performance in this. Honestly, I like Mark Holton's performance better because it's almost that uh, like doomsayer trope type that was prevalent in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Like he kind of knows what's going on, but no one believes him. Yeah. And because he's kind of the the town fool. Yeah. You know, but, you know, he believes in leprechauns. He believes in fairies and magic and all this stuff. And when everything starts going on, he's like, it's a leprechaun. And like, no, no, it's not. Yes, yes, it is. Right. You know, so w- watching his character go is, I-, I think, my favorite part of the first movie. And, you know, to step back for a moment, I don't know that it's so much Jennifer Aniston's known for her breakout performance. It's that it's her first movie. No, it, it, yeah. And I mean, it really did, you know, and to give credit, it did launch her into the trajectory of where she is now. I mean, from here it was, I mean, almost directly into, you know, the line for friends and then superstardom. Mm -hmm. So, and she did a killer job. So I, I can't knock it. Oh, sure. Yeah. No, um. Definitely a, a fan of the Leprechaun series. Um, you know, I I always, when I first started getting into horror films, I think for uh, you know certain a certain demographic, your first introduction is slasher characters. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, obviously, if you go before that, you know, you have the Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman, all of that. But for a certain generation, it's 
Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees. And I always, <clears throat> because, you know, you and I were both born in the mid eighties. So by the time that we're like really seeing this stuff and really picking up on it, it's in the nineties. Yeah. So Leprechaun is, is, you know, that generation's uh, slasher characters. Uh, you it's, know, yeah, it's new. It's exciting. And so I always lumped the leprechaun in with the likes of Freddy, Jason, Michael, mm -hmm. Leatherface, you know, all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, uh, always enjoyed leprechaun. And, you know, I remember a lot of, you know, people our age, you know, being younger, you know, and, and them especially looking back how they talk about how the leprechaun was like horrifying to them like they don't necessarily think of the cheesiness or the comedic elements or or any of that they just recall like this very gruesome ugly looking leprechaun you know with gnarly teeth and and you know on a killing spree oh yeah and like looking back and upon a couple rewatches of this you know it, it's interesting the leprechaun series kind of falls into that mid-range of safe entry level horror like yeah. super entry level you have like universal stuff where you see like absolutely no gore everything's off screen or it's you know discolored you know yeah. and then there's the kid horror movies and then you get to leprechaun where the cools are the cools are kill the kills <laughs> are cool but the the gore is tame. It's still funny, you know. It, it's not designed yeah, to scare your pants off. And there, you know, there's no nudity or, you know, in the first one. Yeah, I say not until we hit Vegas, and you know what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it, it's good. Like, and especially for the '90s, you know, as we were, you know, coming up, it, it was at that time it was good for us you know, to be coming into that era, you know, because at that point, Jason, Freddy, and Michael, for most people, would have been too scary. And here comes this little leprechaun, you know, wise-cracking leprechaun, who, yeah, he's a murderer, but he's going to have fun. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it, it's interesting, because the whole time I'm watching this, I was thinking about, you know, our other podcast, you know, Zoobly Zoo Podcast. And, you know, we had an episode talking about the Limerick Leprechaun. Yes. I was like, this is a Limerick Leprechaun. Oh, of course. Yeah. You know, <laughs> again, you think about where horror went and, you know, Freddy is the top dog at this time. You know, I mentioned uh, Michael and Jason and Leatherface and, uh, you know, all of them, they don't talk. Once you get Freddy we have this personality, you know, and, and sometimes kind of a jokester and, and puns and stuff like that. And, and Chucky, you know, is very popular at this time. So by the time that we get the leprechaun, yeah, you know, he very much is, uh, you know, it, it works very well with that le leprechaun lore of, you know, rhyming and, and all of this stuff. And, and coming up with not only creative kills, but creative one-liners. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, and I, I think what they were going for, because, like, I, I think we can both agree, throughout the entire franchise, the writing isn't the greatest. However, there's a lot of memorable one-liners, a lot of memorable kills, and it's just, it's like a lot of one-off spots where they were trying to hit. And they landed those perfectly. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, this isn't a movie you're going to sit down and be like, this is the best story I've ever watched. No. But no. it is 100% a fun yearly, it, it's a, not even yearly, it's a fun movie to just put in and watch. Sure. You know, I mean, I, I think I watch it like three times a year. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's fun to throw in. Yeah, absolutely. You know, for me... You know, at least one Leprechaun movie, you know, depending on, like, what's going on in my my schedule and all of that. Um, 
at least one Leprechaun movie will be, you know, put on, you know, during St. Patrick's Day. But it's also, you know, surpasses just, you know, a holiday. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's one of those things that, like, if I'm in the mood for, like, a slasher movie with a fun character, Leprechaun is there and may get watched. Yeah, it's, a, it's one I don't mind watching around my kids. And sure. all that said, I don't recommend watching all of them back to back. You will hurt your, you will feel uh, numbed by the end of the movie marathon. Ah, I mean, you know, look, uh, that's a, uh, it, it probably is a mileage personal... may vary. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I know that like, I don't have a problem with that, but I'm also the type who, if I have the time, I love doing movie marathons. So, um, that's fun for me. So, it, you know, again, it really just depends on the viewer, but. I say it's definitely up to, uh, you know, you, you, your personal preference and how much camp and puns you can take in a sitting. And for sure. It's funny. I thought I had a pretty high threshold. <laughs> I was mistaken. So we finished Leprechaun and then we moved to Leprechaun 2. Mm-hmm. Now this is where we get where it gets a little interesting because th- this kind of starts the fan theory that f- throughout this entire franchise these are all different leprechauns or leprechaun in different points of time because none of these are like they're sequels but they're not sequels you know they don't really feed off of the one before <coughs> you know here you have leprechaun looking for a wife. Mm-hmm. And you get a really cool scene with a guy making out with a lawnmower. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, that, that, that's what we're talking about. It's like the inventive kills. Yes. Uh, really cool Easter egg with Clint Howard. Mm-hmm. You know, why don't you go hang out at the, you know, there's a nice ice cream shop down the street. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a nice little uh, throwaway. Mm-hmm. But yeah, again, solid outing. You know, it's just... It, 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 much like the first one, very it, it's very formulaic. He wants his gold and he wants his wife. You know, there are sure. two... Uh, that, that's the two things that are, are the carry through through everything. Yeah. Now... You know, and, and I don't think necessarily... Like like you said, you know, fan theory stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I don't... I really don't think... Obviously, I don't know. I can't guarantee, but I'd almost guarantee... <laughs> They did not put that kind of thought into no. it. It is, again, I say this very loosely, it is 100% just continuity issues. It's the multiverse of Leprechaun. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just like you brought up, you know, look, the writing isn't the greatest. You know, what are we going to do? Like, the continuity of the Jason movies isn't very good either. No. Are we going to start claiming that they're all different Jasons because in well, part, I mean... and, and I'm just saying in one, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, his, his bad eyes, his left eye. And then the next, his bad eyes, his right eye. And then it goes back. Like it, it's, it's poorly put together franchises. That's all it is. And yeah, you know, and that's part of what makes some of these uh, top tier franchises the best. I mean, you, you, you have to suspend, you know, you, you suspend disbelief long exactly. enough. Exactly. And it makes for a really fun watch. Now, because there are parts where things do line up, and then there's stuff where it's like they just didn't care. Mm-hmm. They just wrote something. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah, it's throughout this whole, you know, two, you know, you, you get to see a little bit more magic, a little bit more lore. Sure. And, and, and the cool thing is, is that I, like about the second one that should be noted you know is that it does show some of uh, his backstory Mm -hmm. you know it goes back to ancient ireland uh you know for parts and you know that you know there was a wife he was chasing then and now there's a wife he's chasing now and oh they look the same or you know yeah um you know that whole trope as well um, but regardless of continuity or this or that, like, it's just, it's, it's fun to see him back, like in his 
his element of of Ireland and and all of that. Oh yeah. But then transported to, are they in Los Angeles? Essentially, I think so. That that area. You know, it's the Hollywood tour, like star yeah. tour that they're doing or whatever. Um, you know, so uh, just everything about the Leprechaun, most things about the Leprechaun, I should say, essentially starting after the first one is fun settings. Mm-hmm. That's that's what our trajectory is going to turn into here. Oh yeah, the first one is just. It's just a movie where a leprechaun is there in a house. Okay, cool, whatever. Second one, we're seeing ancient Ireland and essentially Los Angeles. I don't remember if it says specifically, but, you know, there's that. Let's say drinking competition in a bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, first time you get to see the, uh, you, you see him locked up in a safe. Now, I bring that up because it comes up again later. Mm-hmm. Um, so that becomes a nice through line. Um, you know, th- that gets added to the lore of essentially how to beat the leprechaun. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, tons of great jokes. Still nobody outside of the like immediate group is believes that it's a leprechaun. I mean, why would you? It's St. Patty's Day. Basically, sure. you know, it's uh, all this crap's going on. There's just this little guy running around. <laughs> um, let's move to a different town. Yes. Let's go to Vegas. My favorite of the series. And th- th- there's a th- there's a lot to take in with this one because it not only is, in my opinion, this when it when Leprechaun meets it's like pop culture status because sure. I mean, th- there's a lot of pop culture stuff like the Elvis impersonations, yeah, the magic, all this. I was just going to say the exact same thing, yeah. I mean, th- this is, you know, it's, it's ingrained in pop culture now. They hammered it home in this movie. Yeah. But they also introduce the medallion mm-hmm. that can stop him. Mm-hmm. And the idea that you can be turned into a leprechaun through his bite. Right, very, you know, werewolf <laughs> type or vampire. Or... Uh, which kind of makes you wonder what happened to Anderson's dad in the first one. <laughs> hmm. You know, maybe this is her dad running around uh, somewhere. <laughs> that, that's why it's, it, it is different leprechauns. You just bite them and they, they pop another one out. Um, but no, this one is hilarious. I mean, of... The franchise, I think this, I think three is hands down the funniest of the movies. Yeah, and I, I think, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's funny, it's, it's exciting, it, it, uh, I think it is one of the more stronger mm-hmm. ones, you know, production wise, and, and, you know, look, Leprechaun is, is all about his gold. Where is the best place for gold and money? Yeah. Vegas. He loves Vegas. Yeah, best place to lose your gold? Vegas. And, you know, uh, granting wishes. Uh, So many people in Vegas and who gamble uh, are superstitious. They want those wishes. Mm -hmm. They want, you know, know, all this stuff. Um, He can grant you your wishes, and they're not thinking, you know, so... You see, you know, things, you know, not really work out in their favors. Well, and the one thing I love about going back and rewatching the third one is this is right at this, right at the start of the uh, uh, internet popularity. So you kind of get. Oh, right. So you get, you know, when he's in the pawn shop, the guy essentially Googling you know, what to do with a leprechaun. Yeah. Where, I mean, it's all, it's commonplace now. Yeah. But back in, I think it would have been 95, that was all new and fresh and yeah. completely foreign. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we were just making the changeover from, I need to look this up in a book to, yeah. oh, we have this. We have to go to the library. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we can do this on a computer. What? Yeah. 
you yeah. know, and it's like that. It's a time capsule for that window. Yeah, you're right. I didn't think about that. Yep. <laughs> and so every time I watch it, it just reminds me that, yeah, that was right at that, eight, you know, right at that era where everything started to shift. Mm-hmm. And now it's, we have it at blink of an eye, man. It's insane. You know what else is insane? What? A leprechaun in space. Oh, boy. <laughs> and I know in the past I have railed on this movie and railed on space franchise movies but i gotta say i think i'm coming around to it It, it's just pure goofiness yes um you know i I just said my favorite leprechaun movie well least favorite leprechaun movie here but it's still one of those things where again like like i said earlier if i am in the mood for leprechaun I'll watch Leprechaun. Sometimes I've watched all the other ones so much, I want something different. I will still go and watch Leprechaun in space. And as you were saying with, you are coming around on it. I think, you know, that's a good testament to, to really, really any bad movie in a franchise that you care about. Yeah. You know, there are, look, arguably, you know, Halloween 5 or Resurrection are considered some of the worst of the franchise. But there's still some pretty cool stuff in there. Mm-hmm. And and I've always been a believer of this, and it doesn't mean it'll work every time. But if you don't like something the first time you see it, give it another shot if you care enough about it, that now that you know what it is and that it's not that good or that it's not a great storyline or it's cheesy or whatever the case is, well, now you know that. So maybe you might find some stuff you appreciate later. So once the initial shock of, whoa, what did I just watch is gone, Mm -hmm. just sit back and enjoy it for what it is. They knew what they were making. Oh, absolutely. You know, they 100% knew. They, it's like, they're not making Shakespeare. They're making a goofy-ass horror comedy, and they were going to have fun with it. Mm-hmm. And fun they had. They took elements of two. He's looking for a wife again. But this time, it's a space wife. <laughs> it's like, a, Leprechaun meets Starship Troopers. Sure. You know, it, it, it falls it falls very Star much. Star Wars and I mean, well, you yeah, know, so they, they took like every green lightsaber. Yeah, I mean, took just about every space movie from the time, and took pulled elements from it. I mean, aliens, starship troopers, just all of it, and just said, "Here it is. Let's hit." I mean, it's scary movie, but for space. And yeah, yeah, they had right. a ball with it. Mm-hmm. And and that's why, like, you know. So many times these, you know, call them whatever you want. The lower budget cash grab studio film. A lot of times the people like that's the studio is the one just like, this is what you get. Make it, make my money, make me a quick buck, blah, blah, blah. The people making it like in this case, like they're clearly, like you said, they're having fun. They're doing what they can with what they've got. And it's hard for me to fault that. Right. You know, they knew they were a horror comedy. And they said, you know what? Let's do the damn thing. And yep. it, it it still had some strong story elements. Not a strong story, but strong story <laughs> elements. <clears throat> you know, and I mean, it had everything you could want. Love, adventure, almost sex, <laughs> uh, giant leprechauns. Giant leprechauns looking down their pants to see giant little leprechauns. Like, hey, all right. You know, I mean, I think that's probably my favorite scene in the whole movie is when he gets enlarged and, like, the first thing he does is look down his pants and say, hey, hey, you know, now we're talking. You know, it's because, I mean, who wouldn't do that? Sure. You know, so it's by far the goofiest of the franchise. Absolutely. 
And then we And hold on, just before you say that, let me let me just say the one quick thing. Locations. Like I said, two, it's a Hollywood tour. Three, mm -hmm. Las Vegas. Four, space. Five, tell us where we're going. We're going to the hood. Yep. And we basically reinvent the franchise at this point. It's comedy, but it's not as comedic. They try to make it a little bit more serious with hints of uh, real life thrown in, which valiant attempt. Uh, what I did find interesting about this one is I think there's more death from gang violence than there is from the leprechaun. Sure. So that I, I thought was really interesting in a, you know, basically in a slasher film, the, the victims are taking each other out more than he is. Sure. But we saw the return of the medallion. Yes. So at this point, this is the first, <clears throat> this is the first essentially follow up to anything from before. Yeah. So we're, you know, we're finally starting to see that through line and you know, you see Ice-T has, like, this little leprechaun statue because he got the magic flute. Yeah. And that, that's the other thing. You, you get the magic flute. Yeah. So another piece to the leprechaun lore. Yep. You know, that, you know, this this hypnotic His flute. charms. Yep. You know, it really was a reinvention of the wheel. And, like, I, I think one through four is essentially its own little franchise and then you move into lep in the hood and then it's follow-up mm -hmm. which we'll get to in a minute sure. and that works as its own little franchise and then you, you move forward still but you know it, it's interesting to see that they basically went they tried to go a more serious route with yeah. something that's been a very comedic franchise. Well, and, you know, look, uh, you know, black culture in film, you know, is, is you know, a whole nother genre mm -hmm. in of itself, you know. And imagine putting the leprechaun in, like, a Friday movie. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, to me, it's a that's cool the next setting. One. <laughs> you know, it, I I enjoy that a lot, you know. Um, uh, not trying to, you know, sound any any sort of anything. I don't know. Like, <laughs> as you know, a uh, uh, an almost forty year old, you know, white guy. Like, I've always enjoyed black culture in film. Uh, so seeing Leprechaun in that setting is cool. Oh yeah. Me. Well, and. It's, it's natural for him. I mean, you know, he, he's he's rhyming. He's, you know, he he very much em embraces his new environment. And Ice T kicks ass. One hundred percent. Like Ice T is my favorite part of the movie. Uh and ultimately, Leprechaun doesn't get his gold back. He gets his ass kicked. But he comes back to the hood. Yes. 20 years ago. It's been 20 years since Back to the Hood came out. Okay. Um, now that one is a lot more like, let's put Lep in Friday. Sure. Because that, that one taps more into like the comedic uh, stylings of Friday. And mm -hmm. you know, at least in my opinion. Sure. I mean, you, you get a lot more of... Uh, like uh, the friend with weed is a friend indeed, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know just the goo just the goofy shit. Yeah, well, you know it's another one of those those cases where, you know, look every said it a few times, and this is kind of where you know this this um, line ends. But every movie, you know, after the first is is a setting. They let's put him in the hood. Oh, you know what? We've kind of like got a revitalized hit here. Cause I remember like 
how big of a deal that was that what leprechauns in the hood like so many people mm -hmm. were interested in that it did well oh well hey let's go back to the hood oh yeah and a lot of times what ends up happening for you know so many franchises oh well this worked well let's double down and do it again and it almost and I don't even know if it's on purpose, but it almost becomes a parody of itself after that. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what Back to the Hood is. And there's certainly elements of that second one that I enjoy, but I personally don't find it to be quite as strong or memorable. No. Uh, it did kind of drive home the use of the word ninja. Sure. In, in a couple of memorable scenes that, mm -hmm. look, you want to know the scenes, go watch the movie. Um, it's, it's better that way. Uh, you know, but outside of that, yeah, it's just, it, it's a fun, it, you know, it, it's a fun version. We, 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 we get some interesting story, but outside of that, it's, it, it's just another fun run. A lot right. of fun kills. You learn basically, we, we did get in this one though, the never ending pot of gold. Ah, I, I I did like that addition. That, that that I thought was a very interesting add-on to what has already been laid out before. Because you know it's always like the crock of gold, crock of gold, crock of gold. This time it's like the little treasure chest, and every time you close it, it fills back up. Yeah. So it made me wonder how he knows how many shillings he had. Because normally it's like, oh, I have a hundred shillings. Oh yeah. You know now it's just like this never-ending thing. So. I don't think he can keep track anymore. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. And then we don't have a Leprechaun movie for quite some time. Mm -hmm. We don't have another one until 2014. Yeah. Leprechaun Origins. Yep. We reinvent the wheel again. Yes. This time, no Warwick Davis. No. Nope. Completely different feel. Yes. Like horror movie yeah uh starring hornswoggle mm -hmm. from wwe yep i really liked it I, I do too and here's here's the problem you know it, it, it's it's a look i'm not gonna say that it's a great movie either no uh but I think it is a cool leprechaun movie with an asterisk. You know, and this almost, you know, could come across as like apologetic for the film. And, you know, to a certain degree, like I 100% agree with where most people come from, where they're like, wait, what? What is this garbage? Um, this isn't a leprechaun movie. And you're right. It's not the leprechaun. It's a movie with a leprechaun. It's a leprechaun. Unfortunately, you know, it's just, um, they tried something different. They referred to it as Origins, which would have made you think that it was going to be like a, a pre-story or a prequel or whatever to the Leprechaun we already know. And it is, again, it, it's such a different type of Leprechaun. It's not like the swashbuckling horn swoggling leprechaun it's like a little like like more you know like like goblin creature yeah, it's like a like a burrowing man eating gopher almost and yeah it's just he's vicious and brutal yes. and from a horror standpoint it is phenomenal and as a standalone film i think it is great i think you know, where everybody, you know, I, I agree, where everybody stumbles is like, oh, this isn't, you know, the Leprechaun. Well, mm -hmm. no. You know, they, they, they tried to reinvent themselves again. Yeah. You know, and I think at this at this point, they were trying to reinvent themselves without Warwick Davis, without that style of character. Well, and from my understanding now, so I do have a relationship with... Hornswoggle, or, you know, Dylan Postel is his name. 
Uh, and he told me that there is, there, there was, um, they put an offer out to Warwick Davis to, and I don't remember exactly what it was, but it, it would have just been like a small enough part that would have somehow connected the franchises better. Mm. And, uh, from my understanding, he politely declined. Um, so they just did away with that. But I, I guess there was some form of, hey, let's try to do something here. Uh, and it just didn't work out. Um, now, also, for the longest time, I had wondered if the script originally called for Hornswoggle being more of a character because a lot of the early promo stuff very much hammered home that Hornswoggle is the leprechaun and then we don't even really see like a great mm -mm. glimpse of, I mean we see glimpses but we don't ever really see him very well anytime that he's like on screen it's more like from his vision um you know with with weird camera tricks and stuff and and i asked him too if he had if there was ever a, a like an original point where like he was supposed to be more of the leprechaun character and he said no that was not the case hmm. um that it was always supposed to be more of this creature thing but i i still thought that was a very odd choice yeah on you know WWE or you know whoever the exact you know uh, uh, writer or you know producer was who came up with the idea, I always thought that was an odd thing to you know when WWE started to make movies again, those were like the two kind of big things they were pushing was see no evil with Kane and Leprechaun with with hornswoggle mm -hmm. and you know see no evil and see no evil 2 are their slasher movies and kane is he is michael myers you know essentially how did you not make hornswoggle the leprechaun right uh odd choices i do think but again outside of all that uh wanted to try and give a little perspective you know from you know the guy that played the character uh but Outside of all that, I still think it's a pretty cool story for a leprechaun and how it, it, it's almost like, you know, more like the myths of it, almost like Halloween and trick or treating. You know, you leave your 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 bowl of candy or a treat or whatever on your doorstep. So the spirits, you know, like can take that and leave, you know, they leave a gold watch hanging or or whatever like it's you're leaving gifts mm -hmm. so the leprechaun doesn't bother you essentially uh so i think there's a lot of really fun stuff about this movie <coughs> but anyway you you had mentioned uh warwick davis and uh small part and I, I, it reminded me of a note i had for when we were in vegas mm. we get a briefly see back in three a out of make it out of makeup warwick davis in the casino when cody is walking through the casino and i yeah. i've always thought that scene was uh fun because like when cody comes into the casino there's warwick sitting at a slot machine wearing a little green uh sweater and like brown fedora just sitting there playing the slots mm -hmm. I, i've always thought that was a fun uh little throwaway shot and then we don't have to wait another 14 years. We wait four years to, for 2018's Leprechaun Returns. Yes. Now, this is essentially, I don't want to say victim, but it's another one of the 2018 uh, uh, sequels, I guess. Because this is right around this time, everything was getting a direct sequel. Mm. Yeah, this Critters got one. Uh, something else, maybe that I'm not remembering. Um, and this, yeah, this is essentially what should have been Leprechaun Two, 
because we're back to the original house. We see Ozzy again. I mean, it's... I mean, it is all these years later. Right. You know, so, you know, it, it, it's it, it's very well timed out. It's just, it, it's interesting that, you know, we, we've now reinvented the wheel at least twice. And now we've gone back. Yes. You know, and I, I think... I think ultimately that's why we're kind of at a standstill now on Leprechaun is they're not sure where to go. I know where I'd like to see it go. Sure. Um, I love this movie. Oh yeah. It is the most violent. Um, the most, uh, you know, look, the, the Leprechaun has always looked pretty good mm-hmm. with his, you know, makeup and, you know, all of that. Um, but this one's like special effects, uh, practical effects are really good. Right. And, uh, it it just, it comes from a great team. Um, people who've put out, uh, some really cool horror movies over the years, uh, kind of, you know, more independent or or, uh, sometimes almost art house kind of, um, they they put out they worked on uh, the trauma film father's day they worked on i think it's called uh, the visitor uh they've worked on some like a24 type stuff and um anyway you know look into who they are uh what they've worked on and you'll be like oh damn like they've got some some credits and for them to work on um a leprechaun movie that was made directly straight to sci-fi, which again, it has a negative thing for all these years. Mm-hmm. Like it, it is, it's cool. And for it to have that original setting of the first movie and, you know, it's, is it Jennifer Aniston's daughter? Yeah. You know, and like, they even have like a Jennifer Aniston voiceover, uh, or a, 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 a sound alike. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and yeah, Ozzy's back, and uh, it's just, I, if for some reason you were like, ah, Leprechaun movies aren't that great to begin with, the last one wasn't any good, why should I even give this a chance, it's not Warwick Davis, it's someone that looks like and is acting like him, I would heavily advise you to reconsider giving this a shot, because, again, I'm not going to say it's great, you know, but for a leprechaun movie, like, boy, if it's not one of the, the out, don't look at the nostalgia of it. If it's not one of the the best made and most creative ones, oh, one hundred percent. You know, that's that's my my view on it. But it's it's cool. Well, and with this one, it it, it was when Warwick officially said he was done with the franchise. Because they offered him a role in this one as well. And, you know, he's like, you know, hey, I have kids. And with, you know, looking at where the genre is now, don't don't really see myself wanting to uh, pick this up right now. So yeah. I'm going to pass. Yep. <clears throat> so the end of an era, beginning of a new, you know, story. Yep. Out of watching all of this, I would like to see leprechaun team up with art the clown oh yeah i've i this is a thing you've had in your mind for a while yeah yeah i mean you have the silent guy with art and you have the mouthpiece with leprechaun i mean let's put the two together you're in for a bloody night in the town yeah i would be remiss if i went without mentioning this what originally started as a joke Darren Lynn Bowsman, director of many Saw films, very big in the horror genre at one point. He had mentioned that he wanted to make a leprechaun movie in the Old West. And fans took off with that. Now, this was like 10 years ago at this point, but every St. Patrick's Day, like, I'll bet you can go through and see somebody tag Darren Lynn Bowsman somewhere and say, hey, when do we get this Leprechaun movie? (laughs) It happens all the time. 
and he even said he's like yeah it started as a joke but like now i i really kind of want to do it and um he obviously threw saw and repo the genetic opera and other films probably you know he has a relationship with lionsgate films Mm -hmm. who owns the rights to leprechaun why why isn't this happening he you know in his mind it's very similar to uh you know something like vegas like it's the perfect setting for the leprechaun, the old West, you the know, gold rush, gold yeah. rush. Exactly. Um, why can't we get the leprechaun in different settings? That's, that's what the, the, I, I don't know math. Uh, what? 80% of the franchise is, is a setting. Yeah. It's been mentioned several times in this episode. Hollywood, Vegas, space, the hood, the hood again. Location, the location, location. Why, exactly. Why not the Old West? Right. Um, so uh, I clamor for that. Mm-hmm. I hope someday it happens. Um, we'll see. I just want to see him palling around with like an old drunk prospector. Uh, sure. That would be sure. amazing. You know, and look, there's going to be the, uh, you know, the ladies of the night, you know, uh, uh, bar fights, mm-hmm. um, the uh, shoot off, the, I, I, why can't I think of what it's called? The shootouts? Yeah. Yeah. You know, stand back to back and walk 10 paces, turn around or, you know, like there's just so many stupid. <laughs> mm-hmm tropes of oh, yeah. the leprechaun and westerns that you mix those two together and i think we've got a recipe for just another silly and creative leprechaun movie oh 100 percent. so anyway that's that's what i want to see overall i enjoy the leprechaun series quite a bit leprechaun in space and maybe back to the hood are my least favorites three Hood returns, probably my favorites. One, two, uh, origins, all like somewhere in the middle towards the top of. I, I just enjoy them. Yeah. So that's that's kind of my quick ranking. So where can listeners keep up with you? Okay, um, I've got a wrestling themed podcast uh, as part of. Um, Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, and Mark Sterling of the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. Um, as part of their Major Pod Network, I have a show called The Major World Order where we interview people from within that community talking about wrestling collectibles and uh, just collecting in general. Uh, you can check us out, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all at Major World Order. It's on uh, Apple, Spotify, uh, Amazon to listen to all of that. Uh, I have a band, a horror themed punk band called Graveyard Smash. You can listen to it on Apple, Spotify, Amazon. Just look for Graveyard Smash and uh, a podcast with Moose that he uh, mentioned briefly. And you've maybe heard commercials for in the past, the Zoobly Zoo podcast where him and I and the star of Zoobly Zoo the children's uh, educational show with anthropomorphic animals. Lookout Bear himself, Michael B. Moynihan, is the host where we go over every single episode of Zoobly Zoo. And you can find me and other great podcasters over at electronicmediacollective.com. Or if you just want to find me, you can find me on Twitter and Facebook at Moose Media Inc. Just look for the moose. And if you are going to be in the Omaha area... Or just want to come to the Omaha area around, say, April 1st, you can actually see Graveyard Smash in concert at the Waiting Room Lounge in Benson. And later in the month, April, the weekend of April 21st, 22nd, and 23rd in Grand Island, Nebraska, you can come hang out with Monster Mash alum Wyatt Weed at Grand Comic Fest. Get your tickets at grand.ticketleap grandcomicfest.ticketleap.com more information in the links in the episode description and real quick Wyatt Weed 
one of the main predators in Predator 2. So, right. you know, for you horror fans, that's a uh, pretty, pretty big deal. Say, go back, a listen. List of... Say, go back, listen to his episode, come hang out with him, come hang out with us. Mm-hmm. Just have a grand old time. That's right. And as always, Billy, this has been fun. Mm-hmm. Listeners, make sure you tune in next month for an all new episode of Moose's Monster Mash. Billy, we'll have you on again sometime. But let's wait a few I'm months. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> until next time. We've got to get time, a counter how many I've been on so far. That uh, should be pretty easy. You're in the top five of uh, most downloaded pretty uh, consistently. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> just, just playing. You put me on good episodes, uh, good episode topics. Right. <laughs> and listeners, until next time, mash on. This has been Moose's Monster Mash. Come back for more chills and thrills if you dare. <laughs>